Good evening and welcome to Ending the Day with God on Thursday the 6th of July. We opened with Paul Miller's Nunc Dimittis. We place our souls and bodies under your guarding this night, O God. O Father of help to frail pilgrims, protector of heaven and earth. We place our souls and bodies under your guiding this night, O Christ, O Son of the tears and the woundings. May your cross this night be our shield. We place our souls and bodies under your glowing this night, O Spirit, O gentle companion and soul friend, our heart's eternal warmth. Amen. We continue our journey tonight through Paul's first letter of the Corinthians, reaching chapter 14, verses 13 to 17. One who speaks in a tongue should pray for the power to interpret. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unproductive. What should I do then? I will pray with the Spirit, but I will pray with the mind also. I will sing praise with the Spirit, but I will sing praise with the mind also. Otherwise, if you say a blessing with the Spirit, how can anyone in the position of an outsider say the Amen to your thanksgiving, since the outsider does not know what you are saying? For you may give thanks well enough, but the other person is not built up. Thanks be to God. And now our reflection. Worship is not only about connecting with God and with one another, it is a means of spiritual growth. We do not praise God because God is needy for praise, but because we want to express our love and gratitude to our Father in heaven. That outpouring of love and gratitude blesses us as we express it. But the experience of blessing does not negate the importance of engaging the mind with what is happening. Paul holds tightly to his point, wanting to make absolutely sure that the Corinthian believers understand that worship must involve both spirit and mind, heart and head. It must be more than a sugar rush of joy. It has to be part of lifelong transformation. Only then will the believers continue in their journey towards maturity. Only then can their church community hope to endure the challenges of first century life and carry on into the future. These days, people tend to pick a church to attend according to a number of issues besides proximity, including worship style, quality of preaching and warmth of fellowship. Simply supporting the nearest local church is, in our experience anyway, more a feature of small town or village life. There are advantages and disadvantages with both ways of choosing. But one distinct advantage of going local is that we learn to negotiate and navigate difference in terms of personalities and our personal preferences. Such coming together can be immeasurably enriching, not only for the individual, but for the community as a whole. Amen. Now join together in the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our Father, we are mindful as we come to you in this evening hour, not only of our own but also of the needs of others. Relieve and heal the sick. 
console the sorrowing and the lonely, guide the anxious and perplexed, have in your keeping those who face danger this night, and be near to all whom we love, for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace to you. We bless you now in the name of the Lord. Peace to you. We bless you now in the name of the Prince of Peace. Peace to you. Amen. <laughs>